Hello everyone, welcome to Chess Cakes and my name is Deepak. So let's go to the Chrome and let's quickly have a look at the uh, application that we are going to be building. So in this, if you see that we have built the center page already where the student details, student details of their marks are displayed, but we have not really built this sidebar component, which I'm expanding and shrinking at this moment. We have already built component, go to the VS code. Here in the VS code, let's just create a sidebar component. So I'll quickly open a split screen here and then let's go to the yeah, NGGC you'll be able to find this code available in my GitHub repository anyway so right now it has created the HTML file the TS file for sidebar component although it is not available in the app component HTML. So let's just put this here. I think the name of the component has to be students details sidebar. Okay, so let's go to here. Let's build this. You can notice that the application build has failed. Why it has failed? Because this component sidebar component is not found here in the reference of main component. Let's just import this here. In building sidebar, sidebar component. And here, let's just import this. And then this sidebar component to be included here in the import list. All right, so we have done this bit. Now let's see if the error has gone or not. Let's quickly see the app component. Yep, the error for this has already been gone. So now let's quickly go to the browser and see how this application looks like now on the browser. This is the application we're gonna be building. Let's go to the student detail, the application that we're building, sidebar works. So it has appeared over here. Now let's do the styling and build the dark background and everything else. And then we'll go to the routing. So here's the code we already have for sidebar component. So the CSS file, HTML file, and then the component itself you can find out in my GitHub repository. Right. So let's just quickly fix the console error right now. Go to the sidebar component. Let's just define this as input. Sorry, it has to be apps printed now it has become a leaky compact the error should not appear yeah we are good to go let's quickly have a look at chrome browser you can see here in the Chrome browser that although we have got a sidebar here, but then it's not moving anywhere. When if I click, nothing happens. So let's just fix this. So in order to fix, let's go back to the VS code. Now there is an interesting concept that we're going to be talking about is the input and output property for any component. Whenever you diff, whenever you design component and you want to receive some input from the from the parent component where it is defined or where it is de where it is defined you need to provide at the rate input and add okay, so as you can see over here so is expanded is a property which i'm going to be receiving wherever it is defined and where it is defined is currently in the app.html and in the app.html now i can comfortably write statement which is is expanded and my data is expected. Let's just declare a variable name sidebar expanded. We haven't defined the sidebar expanded in the app component.t. Let's just make it as boolean type 
the initial value is true. Okay, so there is no console error over here in the down below, and the property is defined here. We have just defined an input property for sidebar expanded, and also we must understand that when this component is expanded or shrinked, the parent component must also know. So in order to pass the information from child to parent, we what we do is we define output. So output is basically a type of event, type of an event emitter rather. We'll define it like okay sidebar event emitter boolean. New event emitter. So I had already declared event emitter. I had already imported event emitter in the core uh, import above the so line number two. That's going to be part of type of boolean. Do this, and now we have defined the input, the output, the details of this input and output, and other communication. We are going to be talking about towards the end of. This. Towards the end of this tutorial, this entire tutorial, our first objective is to build this app. And just for now, I've just described briefly what input and output is all about. We are going to be talking. We are going to be diving deep into these concepts a little later in the tutorial. So let's just quickly go back to browser and see where our app is behaving so far. Let's go to the browser, and here I can now see that the app has taken some shape, although it's still showing some error like handlebar toggle those functions i have not defined we will come to these we are also we need to display icons and other details so let's go back to the vs code and fix these errors first of all handle sidebar toggle this function will define here The idea here is whenever we are going to be whenever this handlebar toggle function is clicked which is described or rather which is written on this icon we are going to be sending an event to the parent component which is app component in our case let's just save this save this now we have defined this function now our objective is to basically design code to shrink the sidebar and expand the sidebar. So in order to do this, we first of all have to put some classes on the declaration of student details sidebar over here. So now since we have also written a handle sidebar toggle, which is basically going to be sending an event to toggle sidebar to its parent component. So in the parent component, we have only the bound the incoming property. We still need to capture the output. So in order to capture this, we're going to be capturing this event with the name called toggle sidebar. Toggle sidebar. Now define this. Sidebar expanded equals to okay. So now we have captured it in the Parent component as well. Let's now go to Chrome and see how it behaves. So now we can see when we click on this icon, it shrinks and expands. However, there is still a problem is that the icon and these texts are not properly defined. So let's just go back to the HTML template and fix this. Let's go to the VS Code. In the VS Code, type our component. 
in the sidebar component i think these icons are not available so let's just bring these icons also so in order to bring these icons in order to bring these icons on our web page let's just go to the let's just go to the bootstrap icon library so here i can say it says npmi bootstrap icon in order to have the so here we go further down we go down below the install it says that it has a few option of installing it let's just take the cdn route copy this url and we need we need to put that in the vs code so let's go to the vs code and index.html which is defined the root of your application page here is the index.html just put this here and now we have the icon available here now we are going to be making use of the tag to bring the or display the icon on our web page now so go back to the home and i have this page over here the first icon that we need is of a home so let's just search for the home icon so click here let's just take this copy this and put it in our vs code right bar component now what's the next thing that we need we need to go back to chrome and see the number let's just go back to the icon over here and search list ol let's just copy this put it in your vs code Yeah. Now let's go back to Chrome. See what's the third icon we need? The Grixius setting icon. So go back to icons. Let's copy this. Go to VS Code, include that over here. Now, quickly go back to the web page, home browser, and see how our application has turned up so far. So, yeah, you can see that the expand and the close is here. You can click on say these are still not selectable since there is just one page. But somehow the text is not moving here. So we'll have to make this change in the parent component as well, CSS. Right. So let's go back to VS Code and try to fix this. Here the VS Code, let's just close all of it. We have created a sidebar properly. And in the sidebar here at the HTML, we're going to be making changes here in this page. Okay, so idea here is that when your application expands or shrinks, it also needs to move page below over here, right? So student record is the page. So let's see how we can fix this. In order to fix this, we also need to bring in another concept from Angular. So now we're going to talk about ng class directive. So there is uh, there is a directive called ng class so its work is basically to put the class conditionally so our task is whenever the sidebar is expanded we want the this part of the code to shrink this part of the code to adjust its width as per the expanded sidebar and when the expanded sidebar is not expanded, when the sidebar is not expanded, we want it to adjust as per 
the minimum width defined in the student details sidebar component. So how do we do it? So basically, essentially, we can do it by putting a conditional style. So in order to put a conditional style, way it's done is called ng class. Now it is done in the ng class. You need to provide an object. In the object, you will have to provide class name as an object property. So here in this case, we are going to be making it as sidebar expanded. And over here, we will make it available only when sidebar expanded is true. This class, how it works is that moment sidebar expanded turns true, this class would be appended along with the original class defined here in the, for this div. If this expanded type are not true, then sidebar expanded class will not be appended. We'll have to define the sidebar classic sidebar expanded class in the component. How do we define it? So essentially, we're just going to be making it like this. So this syntax means is whenever a student record and a sidebar expanded is available, the margin left is going to be 350 pixel. If you want to further see how it works is let's go back to home and let's go to the playground of SCSS. Let's and put this class over here. If you notice what this syntax essentially means is wherever your student record and sidebar expanded is put together, this is going to have the margin left as 350 pixel. So the sidebar width maximum width is 350 pixel and that's why we are shrinking it by 50 pixel whenever it is applied. Let's go back to VS code and see if everything is good so far. There is another change that we will have to do is this is so this basically covers when your sidebar expanded is true. What if your sidebar expanded true is not true? So in that case, by default, we want our center panel to be at least 60 pixel apart from the left wall, which is the width of the side panel when the side panel is shrinked. So we're going to back, go back to browser and see if this works correctly. Let's go to the Chrome again. See. As we can see this is shrinking and moving pretty neatly. So we have built first sidebar and a center panel. The icons still don't work because we haven't put the routing just in yet. Let's just do that in the next tutorial. Thank you.